Great topics are often hard for people who feel so obligated to speak because it requires us to recall back on different moments in our life and memories that pull us back to those same emotions in the same ways that we felt back then in order to be of service to our community. I like to lean into my rawest form to be of service because fortunately, I've curated a lifestyle that has brought me so much benefit by being authentic that I just can't turn back now. I'm also at a place where I've met so many people who may have not been able to communicate in depth as much as I would like to. So this is the only place where my rawness and my authenticity is able to find its new purpose. For someone who is used to using the sincerity of my emotions to tell other people's stories through acting and storytelling that way, now that I have the privilege of using my own story to be vulnerable and connect with others, I want to make sure that I get into all of the little nooks and pockets within the heart and other people's heart so that light can shine through. So with that being said, Welcome to my channel, my name is Jasmine Siri, or if you're on Spotify, welcome to the Rana Hath Podcast, where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I speak on different topics, share my experiences, and how I navigate life consciously so we can navigate our emotions, reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind together. I think about the topic of comfort zones a lot and how easy it is for us to skip over how scary and uncomfortable our comfort zones become because it feels like in your late 20s where most things we encounter are lessons that change our heart posture or call you to walk in the real adulthood, not just the idea of being an adult you perceived when you were in your late teens or early 20s. Just at any given time where we are required to meet the next chapter of our lives and grow. And because the definition of the word comfort zone and how we say it in our lives sounds more of like a relaxing scented candle than what it actually truly is, we lack the severity of just how making the mistake of clinging to our comfort zone can prolong our suffering or keep us from a prosperous destiny. By that one choice of thinking where we once found comfort was safe. In this episode, I want to talk about ways we can recognize our comfort zone enough to identify the ledge we must jump from and how we are able to recognize our comfort zones as dangerous in hopes that this conversation gets you one step closer to your divine purpose or gets conversations brewing in your mind that you allow to see or release yourself from your comfort zone. Because for the woman or the person that you want to be, that place is no longer safe. So, let's get started. Grounding happens within ourselves, not in the places we're outgrowing or where our purpose has been served. Today is Monday, April 8th. I was off from work today, thankfully, and today is a lunar eclipse, and here in Austin is where we could see it in its totality. So the city has almost been in preparation, it seems. I know there have been a lot of people flying in just for this very occasion, and I've seen so many RVs just parked in places and roads have been blocked off just to see this event. And usually I love the idea of something as wonderful as this happening in the cosmos, but to be honest, I've just been really in my cycle and I just have been extremely exhausted. But not only that, I feel my intuition is calling me to ground myself. I personally like using my cycles as opportunities to illuminate my intentions, but this time, on a day as potent as the eclipse, I got the insight that I never really grasped the concept of grounding and what it truly means. And how this relates to comfort zones is because I feel there may have been times where I mistook gratitude, loyalty, and commitment to my surroundings as a grounding. I hope I'm making sense. Let me elaborate. When we are in a chapter or some place that requires us to be great stewards and of service, there is a part of us that gets stuck there because we knew it was an anointing that brought us there in the first place. 
But when we feel in our intuition that something new is approaching, it scares us into overperformance because we want to have gratitude for that season. We depend on that season for our lives and everything that we have been able to maintain. And maybe some old abandonment wounds creep back into our hearts because we know how hard it is for us to let things go. And the thought of having to muster up the courage yet again to let things go scares us a little bit. And when we see God calling us again, we take it as a punishment because we know everything that it requires us to let go of instead of seeing it for the ascension that it truly is. And without seeing clearly, we choose to ground ourselves in the place God had us because it was an anointing that brought us there instead of grounding ourselves in who we are and everything the place before called us to be. We forget to put our trust in the transformation that just happened inside of us that made us the perfect candidate for what's next. It was the work and all that we learned and what we became through the process of development in the last chapter that solidifies our seat at the table of our desires. And if we are not wise, we can easily mistake our graduation as an exile. And I have to bring back the story of Moses yet again, like I did last week, because it's just so real. Because this prince, who was just given a promotion as an overseer, was taken to the environment that brought him to commit a crime by mistake because of his heart posture. And it wasn't until that defining moment that he chose to exile himself into God's hands. And I get blown away by it and th through it all because it just reminds me that God won't call us anywhere without being equipped. And it takes trust, belief in ourselves and the ability to release all of the things that brought us comfort to understand and walk in our true power enough to hold presence in our next destination. I think the biggest indicator that it's your turn to make a move is when you feel your surroundings are doing more damage to your spirit than the unknown. Set the scene of your mind like a movie. You're in a burning house and it's up to you to either scale the building or stay in your home. And everything that you have ever known to love exists here. Let's take it up a notch and say that your family and friends are in the fire too. And when we choose to stay in places where we have completely emotionally or intellectually feel removed from it does feel like the longer we physically stay there the more the fire of irritation or discomfort fills up inside of us to a point where we betray ourselves have you ever heard the term or saying i refuse to set myself on fire just to keep you warm I think most people settle in their lives or in their partnerships, their comfort zones, because not only do they fear the unknown, they may feel their choices have been nothing but a betrayal to themselves. And when that happens, when that person or that thing reveals itself to no longer be a safe place for you, we grow so exhausted when we See that the people we chose come into our lives and mishandle us or when the places and the things we thought we wanted don't feel as good in our lives than desire or longing for it was. It freezes us. Sometimes we don't know if it's ungrateful or pure dissatisfaction. And I think truly in order for us to discover what it is we truly like, we have to experience a bunch of not so great things and that's okay. It shouldn't stop us from continuing on. And we have to stop judging ourselves for the choices that we make. We are living and a part of living is making different choices. What scares you more, the thought of an unfulfilled life in a place you can easily recognize and predict, or a life full of unknown wonder? And I think these choices are the ones that truly define us. I think the raw, authentic truth of this world is that not everyone will decide to take that red pill of life. 
And everyone has a different version of that red pill. And that doesn't make anyone less or more worthy of happiness. But as someone who has obsessed over choice making, self-concept development, and the power of choice and objectives and plots and acting, this is very important for the way that we live about in our lives. Someone when I was young loved me very much, gave me the assignment of writing out a timeline for my life. And it started with the basic surface level things that any brainwashed person in America seems to be good for their life. I want to go to school, I wanted to get a good job, and then I wanted to get married and be a mommy. And all of that sounds delicious, like an American dream pie, right? But it was not me. And I brought this list back to the person who loved me enough to say, but wait, Jasmine, you're an artist. Hasn't anyone been able to speak to you about what that lifestyle truly is like? Also, Jasmine, you've never dreamed of a wedding day in your life. Don't you think that's kind of interesting that you would put it on your list? And all of these things that they had to kind of awaken in me, because when you're in the doctrine of the public school system, you're not really taught or encouraged to exist in the creative space when you're developing your life. They only want you or they only require you to develop a lifestyle that feeds their society, not something that feeds the creative soul and other things that exist inside us and make us human. So I'm so happy that someone loved me enough to see me to pull me out of that mindset. Crazy, right? And I encourage you to do that for yourself wherever you're at in your life. Write out exactly what you want. And when you get to the end, read it back to yourself and ask yourself if it actually sounds like your happiness or someone else's. So I made a list of a life that was good, but it wasn't mine. And I knew if I was being 100% honest, I couldn't possibly see happiness at the end of it. Once I knew that, and I knew for certain that that was not for me, I saw the importance of making a bold choice for my life. I now take my life as this lead character role with a mind aware enough to see the multitude of choices that we all have in any given moment, enough to take risks. I make daring choices in the way I express myself because I remember a life where I didn't and I was unhappy with the result. And if I can speak honestly, I've been doing that the whole time, but I'm just going to ask. I knew that I was existing in only 10% of myself sometimes because I wasn't ready for the work that authenticity required of me 100% of the time. I remained in this cage that I called a comfort zone because I just was not ready for the work that it meant or the amount of bravery that is meant to live an authentic life. And I think some of us are there. We know what it takes to really exist in our authenticity. And maybe we see other people walking in that passion for their life and unapologetically, and it scares us. I think when you've grown up in spaces where a lot of people are judgmental, we start to judge ourselves unfortunately, and it keeps us away from an authentic life. And I want to tell you, strip yourself away from any type of lifestyle that you've ever lived growing up, the types of people that you used to be around, the type of jokes that they used to share. It's not a fun place to be, I guess. You know, it, there's no excuse for you not to exist in something that could be absolutely right for you just because of everything that you've ever known. And I think what I want to do in this channel, in this podcast series, is really spark different interest in people's minds, spark curiosity about all of the amazing things you have yet to discover about what you like, about this life, about this world. And I truly think that in the spirit realm, before we're ever here, we dream about all the great things that we get to experience in this life. And some of it are the different emotions that we get to have. Maybe it's the food, maybe it's the art, but to be able to actually get, get to be here and touch it 
it's a part of the privilege that we get to be as human beings. And if you waste your time not experiencing it, not discovering for your own self, not tasting it, not um, just seeing it with your own eyes, you're really doing a disservice for your life. And then you're just going to come back and try it all again. I just want to encourage everyone to do the hard work of existing in your authenticity 100% just to see where it takes you. Because the truth is, outside of our comfort zone, and when we truly decide to show up and do the work, it doesn't get easier because we decide to. We just grow more curious of where being 100% of ourselves would take us. And I encourage everyone to take that route. Release the idea of your surroundings as a comfort zone because you haven't even experienced all of the amazing things this world has to offer. You haven't even experienced real love, true peace, life fulfillment. If you're clinging to ideas that don't even resonate with you, they're just familiar things from your past that you know very well. And I'm going to tell you, when you are actually ready to take that step, to walk that path, you know, walk the talk in your authenticity, enough to release yourself from old comfort zones, to discover new ones, and exist in the obedience of falling off of the cliff into God's hands and onto the path of your divine destiny, it will take a lot of courage. It will take a lot of surrendering to the unknown. And I think that's something that I struggle with a lot. Being this super wanting to control everything, I am someone that likes to control the outcome. And so often when we do that, we play God and we assume that our outcome would be better than this great creator that made the whole universe. Like, I'm so tired of trying to curate this happy ending. I just want to see how good it all can get. And that will happen when we let go and when we surrender to the wind to ride it off into the destiny of our lives and I really want that for everyone that hears me everyone that watches my videos we are called to make this free fall I don't know if anyone is familiar with the movie soul but it's basically when the souls are ready to come to earth they do this free fall into the planet from this higher place and they do it willingly, not because the life that they're going to have isn't going to be scary or that they won't end up in the spirit world again. It's just that, I don't know, so many more things, so many more exciting things are on the other side of that free fall, are on the other side of that obedience and that trust and the faith in what we do not know, but we feel we deserve something better or something newer is on the horizon for our lives. And I think that's where I'm at. Like, I am so tired of trying to figure out every step, every outcome. Hopefully, with what I share, it's authentic enough to build a community of people that resonate. I think that's my only intention. I just saw that there was a need for me to do this. There was a craving that I had for me to use my voice. And also, I think a lot of people are looking for a comfortable place to release things to really heal and grow and who am I not to want to try to be that you know I had to get through a lot of things and a lot of unworthiness and a lot of pain in my own suffering and my own harsh negative aggressive ways just to be able to sit here and truly feel like I had something to offer you know maybe it's more comfortable for me to want to protect myself maybe it's more comfortable for me to put up these guards and I truly feel like the moment that I released that and I chose to use my voice and I chose to allow the world to see me outside of the guards that I've had, it's brought me more good than not. And I'm just going to continue to walk that path and see where it takes me. And I hope that you continue to walk your path wherever that takes you. Um, yeah, I hope that 
you write down a list or a timeline for your life and truly ask yourself if it is in alignment with what feels authentic to you because that's when you know you're headed in the right direction. You know, asking yourself the hard questions, being able to be the friend to yourself enough to say like, this is not you and when are you going to choose you enough to allow yourself to walk in that 100% I think now because so much is coming to the surface so much truth is being revealed it is now the perfect time for you to fully walk into who you are meant to outside of the comfort zone of everything that you were and take claim of your life I think the entire world is waiting for you. Anyway, I'm just rambling. I hope that what I said is somehow of service to you. I hope that what I said is able to pull you out of your comfort zone and into a more fulfilling life for yourself, whatever that may be. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Download the episode on Spotify if you are listening on Spotify podcast. And, um... That is all that I have. Hope to see you all in my next one. I love you all so much.